Next, we're going to do the pearl edged bow. This is one I developed a few years ago that seems to have been very popular. And we're going to make these loops, we're going to put pearls around them and then assemble them. And this is what your completed bow will look like. These are some of the tools and the materials that we'll be using as we put together our pearl edged bow. Use a roller if you don't have a pasta machine with a motor. Another thing that we're going to be using is royal icing. This we'll use to construct our bow. You'll need some shortening for your fingers to keep them from being sticky. This is our textured roller that we're going to use to put the texture on our, our loops. Super pearl dust that we'll be using to dust the, the loops. You'll need a ribbon cutter. This is the one that I like the best. Uh, there is a pair of scissors that we'll be using. We'll be using a Dresden tool, a spatula, two soft fluffy brushes for our luster dust. This is an optional uh, piece of equipment as well. This is the sugar clay gun. And we have a former for our loops if you choose to use that. I will also show you how to make the loops using kind of a scrunch method. You'll need a four millimeter pearl maker, of course your gum paste, a pizza cutter, gum glue, small brush, and a six inch ruler. In addition, you'll also want a board, uh, a non-stick board to roll out the paste on, and also a flap with a plastic cover to keep your gum paste moist as you're working. And you might also want to get a plastic baggie for your pearls to keep those moist while you're working with them. You might also want to have a dryer. I have a portable one with dowels on it that I uh, insert these little formers on and then that way uh, you can dry them overnight if you choose to have the shaped uh, loops instead of the scrunched ones. They look a bit like this. And the scrunched ones are just thrown on the table and let to freeform. So these are, the, these are the two choices that you can have. We're going to take a portion of paste and roll it out just a little bit so that it'll go through the pasta machine easier. Now we're at a, about a five. Which should be thin enough because we're going to use our textured roller and that will make it even thinner. I found it easier to start in the center roll to one end, to go back to the center, and roll back the other end. Then we're going to use this ribbon cutter. This is probably an inch and a half width. Pick up your excess paste. And we're going to make these six inches long, and I have just a little six inch ruler that I use. And you'll want to put these in a flap to keep them from drying out. Now, and while they're still wet, we want to br brush them with some Super Pearl Luster Dust is what I'm going to be using. If you're doing, I'll say, golden wedding anniversary cake, the um, antique silk is very pretty. But this gives you a nice silk satin look. And I like to brush it while it's wet because it clings better and it doesn't come off near as easily after it dries as it does if you try to put the um, dust on a dry ribbon. Next, we're going to make some pearls. We're going to let this 
sit for a minute. Now there's two different ways you can do this. Start off by putting some luster dust, and I've dumped mine into a bigger container. Makes it easier for the brush. These small containers are a little bit awkward. Now you can either take paste and roll it out into a thin, narrow sausage shape. Use your mold as a guide. Drop this in, press it down. Press it very firmly inside your mold. Squeeze and then trim off your excess. And take your brush and loosen the sides. Make sure your dust is nice and evenly applied to your pearls. And tap it out. Make sure you're... Now that's one way to do it. Here's another way. If you have one of these sugar craft guns, I have a half circle disc in it. And if you lay the rounded side inside your mold and press in. If you don't have the craft gun, you can just roll it out the way I did it first. Or if you prefer to do it with the craft gun, just whichever is easy for you. And again, use your brush. To loosen it and take it out of the mold. Okay. Okay. Next, we're going to use a foam pad again. Turn your strip onto the wrong side. And you're going to put a very thin strip of gum glue down the side. Again, use some thick gum glue, almost a gel consistency, so you won't have a too soggy. Take your pearl strip and position it right where the edge is joined. Tap it down just a little bit to secure it. Turn it over and check to see that you've got your pearls where you want them to be. That looks nice. So we're gonna turn it back over. And using this little veiner, um, I, think, I think it's called a Dresden tool, use the small pointy end and press between each pearl. This is going to secure it to our strip. Then we're going to do the other side. Position your pearls and again snug them up and just touch it down so that it's secure and you can turn it over and see if it's where you want it. back over and again press between each pearl okay. 
Now, take a little gum glue and put right on the end, not a lot, just a little bit. Put your finger inside, touch these together, and with this finger, hold here, and with the other two fingers, you're going to crumple it in together. And then flatten that out a bit. And then shape this, since this is a silk bow, we're going to scrunch it a little. And then just lay it aside to dry. You can shape it any way you want to. You can have it pointy, flattened out. I want mine just a little scrunched. And we'll do another one. When I'm making a pearl bow, I will make all of my loops and have them under the flap. And then I'll go through and make all of my pearls and put them inside of a plastic bag. That way I'm not having to stop and do pearls and do the loops at the same time. It just seems to streamline the procedure a little bit more if you've got everything made up and all you have to do is assemble them. That looks right. Sometimes if you don't get enough glue on the side, these will come off. If they do, don't panic. Just lay it down and re-stick it. It's better to have too little than too much. If you have too much, then it gets goopy and it melts the sugar, and then it's really hard to deal with. Now another way you can do this, is to use a former. If you like them scrunched, all you have to do is the way I showed you the first time. If you want them a little bit rounder, then put your former inside first before you scrunch. And then you can Put this on a dowel rod and let it dry. Usually overnight is better. And it'll give you a shape that looks like this when it's dried as compared to one that's a little scrunched. Let's do a tail. run it through the pasta machine right quick. Okay, on the tail, we don't want it to be as long as the uh, loops, so we're probably going to do it about four inches. Oops. 
Oops. That was generous. This stuff is expensive. You don't want to waste it. my scissors so we'll Off your excess and I save these any scraps of these pearls and use them for the centers of stephanotis so you don't have any waste nice and neat. It's a little harder for me to work it upside down but that's about the only way you can do it on this. Crunch up the end, it'll make it easier to put it inside your bow when you construct it. And dry it over something that'll give it a little bit of a curve or movement. And now we're ready to put the bow together. To assemble our bow, I'm going to put it on a six inch round cardboard. Put just a little dab of royal icing to secure your pastillage disc. The disc is about three inches. We use a biscuit cutter to cut that out. Put royal icing in the center of it. And then we're going to position our loops that are, have been dried at least overnight. And I like to use the six inch cardboard if it's going to go on a six inch cake so I know how big to make my bow. Just keep putting loops in until it looks right to you. Usually about six to seven around the bottom will work. Might want to turn some of them a little bit sideways, like a regular bow would be. Now that I've got this first layer on, I'm going to put some more royal icing. I don't like that. And 
continue adding your loops. Where you put it there. slide it in there and the other tail you can either attach this to the cake and then set the bow down on top of it or if you can find a good spot in here to slip it you can do that but most of the time I put this on the cake and I only have the one tail that's on the bow itself and if you let that dry a few hours it's ready to go Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoy making your own roses and bows. If you need information about classes, let me know. We have our phone number and our website at the end of the video. Thank you.